New Mexicans tend to trust small business, community colleges, the national laboratories, and the farm and ranch industry, but check this out, they don't like the medical system, public schools, and big corporations. Each year, the Garrity Group public relations firm commissions a survey to gauge these attitudes, and NMIF correspondent Larry Aaron sat down with Tom Garrity to talk about what these results say about our state. Well, thanks, Tom, for being here. Tom Garrity with us. And full disclosure, you and I used to work together, we which did. is great. We've been friends a long time, and I'm really delighted to have a chance to interview you. Great. Well, thanks, Larry. It's good to be across the table again. This <laughs> yeah, is wonderful. It's great to see you. The Garrity Perception Survey, your once a year survey, this is the third year you've done it now. Yeah. And uh, it always yields some interesting results. And you were telling me that when it comes in, you know, you order this thing, and when it comes in, it's like unwrapping a Christmas present. Yeah. Yeah, just it's like, you know, there's uh, 162 pages in the, you know, when you get into the cross tabs, it's like unwrapping it one page at a time. Uh, because each year it provides uh, a little bit more insight about how New Mexico residents think and who they trust. So you've been doing this three years now, and you asked some of the same questions consecutive years, and you skipped a year on a couple of these. But as you wade through the data, um, you're looking at the results. What surprised you the most? Well, you know, when, uh, when we go and measure the, th you know, the main industries, uh, who people trust and how people access news and information, there's always going to be a few aha moments. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's uh, very predictable to know that New Mexico residents do trust uh, family and relatives more than any others. But when you look at the amount of distrust that has surfaced over the last several years in state and local government, uh, that's really more of an aha type of moment that you're talking about as far as, right. uh, you know, when we see that distrust has increased 15% over the last three years on state and local government, uh, it's no surprise that government stories tend to be in the newspaper quite a bit. Very interesting. Um, you do this perception survey for what reason? Well, uh, we're in the business of shaping perception. And so for us, to, in order to shape perception, we need to know how New Mexico residents perceive favorable industries, who they trust, and how they access news and information. Uh, so we use it as a tool for us to help our clients to be successful. Uh, but we also provide it as insight for uh, clients and the community as a whole uh, to really have a better understanding of when people say, who do New Mexico residents trust? Um, they know who they trust. It's kind of interesting. There was a, a quite a conundrum in one of the perception results. Uh, people mistrust public education. Mm -hmm. They mistrust health care groups. They mistrust organized religion. But then when asked, who do you trust? It's teachers, it's your doctor, and it's your, your, uh, your, your religious figure, yeah. uh, a priest or minister or whatever. Yeah, it's one of those unique phenomenons that, you know, people, you know, hate Congress, but they love their congressman. You know, they right. really don't like what the city council's up to, but they love their city councilor. So, you know, it's one of those strange nuances, and it all goes down to making those local connections. Uh, use the schools as an example. Uh, people aren't that favorable about public education, but when it comes to the trust of a teacher, uh, they're really one of the top three and for a good reason. Uh, what they are entrusted with as far as the lives and education of a young child, uh, you know, that provides a lot of trustworthiness. So it's fair to say institutions kind of took a beating in this perception survey. Yeah, they really did. And, you know, the surprising thing about the institutions is that when, you, when we get into the cross-tab data as far as how New Mexico residents think about different industries in the eastern part of the state versus the northwest uh, versus north central, Albuquerque metro, and southwest, we found that the favorability of church and organized religion in the eastern part of New Mexico is actually down 29% over the last three years. Very interesting. And that is huge huge. And then when we look at the national laboratories, just in the Albuquerque metro area over the last three years, favorability is down 11 percent. And one more that is of interest as well is when we look at state universities statewide, um, they're actually down about 6 percent over the last three years, but more so in southwest New Mexico where it's down 19 percent in over the last three years. So we know that favorability of uh, some of the institutions in the state uh, that help to make it what it is, uh, is dropping quite rapidly. So you take this info and, and you're in the public relations biz and you go to a politician mm -hmm. or you go to somebody that runs a large institution and you, you have this data. 
what do you advise them to do? Great question. You know, it's it, in a way, even though we're all victims of political campaigns at times, yeah. um, we can learn quite a bit from them. Uh, you know, a campaign really has three key audiences that you look at. One are those who support you, uh, those who don't know that much about you, and then those who are against you. And so what businesses can take away from this is that you want to be able to focus on enabling those who support you, those who are favorable, and inform the uninformed. Uh, give them information that might make them favorable. And with those who are against you, you just ignore because you're never going to be able to sway them. So uh, for people to win favor, they want to be able to, or organizations to win favor, you want to enlist professions that are trustworthy. Uh, professions like physicians, small businesses, number one throughout the state, mm -hmm. uh, as well as um, uh, teachers and scientists, uh, you know, most certified uh, professions. Small business is in an interesting spot with this too, because your, your perception survey found that people love to shop local. And yes. they'll tell you all day long, hey, I'm going to buy local. But then they go right down to Walmart. Yeah, you know, 47 percent of residents say they, they want to be able to support local business. Yeah. When we ask them what what local businesses they've uh, shopped at recently, uh, you know, of the two 356 responses we received, the top 20, uh, 16 of them were national brand chains. Yeah, it was down at Best Buy the other day, you know. <laughs> and so the perception of local is really a challenge, and that's a challenge for really the true local business, those who aren't a part of a national franchise. It puts the local small business guy or, or woman in a really interesting spot. Yeah, it uh, sure does. And it's a tough spot to be in. Um, a couple of other quick things. Um, in terms of where they get their news and how media people are perceived. Sure. <laughs> Talk about that for a moment. Uh, television news is television is the most popular way, and I'm not just saying that because we're on television right yeah. now. But New Mexico residents uh, go to television for news and information more than any other media source. However, when you combine digital media, social media, and blogs, uh, which are number two, five, and six in our survey, uh, you actually all three of those in the digital space surpass television by about 20%. That's so, uh, you know, while people are accessing it, trustworthiness is a whole other issue. Um, people distrust uh, what they see online and digital world more so than any other type of media. Huh. And how do media people fare in the trust scale, too? Well, you know, uh, reporters, local reporters trust better than national reporters. Uh -huh. uh, and, of course, so another interesting thing that we saw is that newspaper, uh, while a lot of folks thought that newspaper was dead, gone, done, and buried, uh, they actually saw a 9% increase over the last year of people turning to it as a news and information source. Maybe they're coming back to it. It's hard to say. Uh, in terms of politicians, and I know you're, you don't really work with politicians per se in your company, but... Mm -hmm. If you had to advise the politicians on what this all means for them, I, I'd say they're in some trouble here. Uh, what would you tell them? Yeah, well, local and state government officials definitely need to find ways to build their trust. Uh, best way to do that is through face-to-face -face meetings and really clear and transparent communications. I think a current uh, issue that's in the news as far as with behavioral health services, uh, one reason that issue has a lot of legs is because of the uh, uh, it involves small business, impact small business, which is very favorable. And who's impacting small business? Well, local and federal government. Yeah. And so that's a perfect recipe for a story to have legs and really to take over the news cycle like the behavioral health issue has. Do you see anything in here that is going to shake up status quo? Uh, you know, information in itself, I don't think, shakes it up. How people use it uh, will really shake it up. And I think that uh, if there's an area for improvement, it would be uh, for organizations uh, like state and local government to be a lot more clear, a lot more transparent, and not necessarily hide behind the things that they've hidden behind in the past. Uh, so I think if there's, a, if there's a takeaway for any organization, I think it's more so for state and federal government as opposed to small business. You think that transparency should start with the leaders of these institutions, the oh. CEOs, the, the heads of all these places? Yeah, everything uh, starts from the top and everything rolls down from the top too. And so what you need to be able to do is have uh, leaders who uh, practice uh, clear and consistent, transparent communications. I'm not saying that that's not taking place here. Um, it's just the perception of New Mexico residents is, is that there's a lot of distrust. And when uh, an organization or an individual has a high level of distrust, they have to work two to three times more to clear or better their name than those who have a favorable or trustworthy perce perception. That 
that is a fascinating fact. And who needs two or three times more of the work these days? Exactly. We're already busy enough. Um, as, as you look at the geographical divisions in the state, too, um, are the traditional breakdowns there, or uh, I, I think you mentioned the religious aspect in the eastern New Mexico has changed quite a bit, the lack of trust there. Yeah. What else geographically did you notice that is different? Well, we, like for example, the oil and gas industry. Uh, the, oil, the energy industry as a whole has different perceptions throughout the state. Um, and as a result, you have areas like the northwestern part of the state and the eastern part of the state that absolutely love oil and gas. However, when you get to the southwestern, uh, north central, and the Albuquerque metro area, not so much. Now, that wouldn't typically bother most organizations uh, because, you know, they have the northwest and the east. But when you look at where the media centers are in New Mexico, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, those markets have a negative feeling towards oil and gas. Uh, so the messages really need to be focused on how do you inform those in the middle, those who are undecided about the industry, uh, and inform them in such a way that they'll feel good about what the industry is doing for the state. How's this survey conducted? Do you uh, do a, a, a you call people? Do you have demographics? All of that? Yeah. Well, since we're uh, since the Garrity <laughs> Group is a public relations firm, we don't do the research. We right. actually hire somebody to do it, and uh -huh. it's research and polling. Uh -huh. uh, so Brian Sandroff and his team. It's actually a scientific sample of a, with a 96.5 percent confidence level. Uh, we don't overrepresent any geographic portion of the state or any ethnic group in the state. So that way it's a, really a clear snapshot of how New Mexico residents feel. A little less than a minute left. What else do we need to know about this survey about us, New Mexico? Well, I think uh, New Mexico, the biggest change that we're seeing is how people access news and information. And uh, we're seeing more and more of that in the digital realm. And so for what individuals and organizations can do to get up to speed in the digital realm, uh, the better off they'll be and better positioned they'll be for the future. I think this kind of thing is fascinating. I just love it. And I'm glad you do this work. This is uh, very, very interesting to, to dive into and have a look. Thanks for sharing the time with us today, Tom. You bet, Larry.